All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is Dan the Bugman here with a bug video, and this video is a little different than my normal videos. What I'm going to be doing today, and I will be doing this in the future also, but I'm going to be putting together a highlight reel, sort of like a vlog, you could call it, of a typical week of pest control operation. When I'm out in the field, I have these circumstances appear to me that may only take a few seconds or a minute or two to explain, and I'd like to put that together into one fun video that that is quick moving and active and lots of things to talk about. That's what this one is. Congratulations, you're watching the first one that I've put together and I'm going to go ahead and get into this video. So I'm gonna put a list of all of the topics that are gonna be in this video uh, in order and what time they start. I get this idea from another YouTube channel, so sorry, but other people have good ideas too. What I'm gonna be doing is putting together video clips and I will either be commentating or they will be actually me just on the site getting them done. Make sense? All right, perfect. Okay guys, we got a big old possum here. We caught it at one of our wildlife trapping jobs. We use double entry cage, pull open so you can see. He's pretty heavy. This is a Probably weighs possum. about 20, 20 something pounds. Might be a new state record. There he is. We put the black trash bag over to like keep it calm. But yeah, the double door works super well. Gonna let him go in the backyard here. Go buddy. Oh, its paws are so big. I know, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> huge. <laughs> Come on. Did you know possums are the only marsupials to inhabit North America? That means they have pouches. Gosh, dude, that thing's so big. I've never seen one that big. Come on, buddy. Dude, it's terrible. Okay, story time. So we do pest control services for property management people and their tenants send them in requests about pest control stuff. And we just got a request from a tenant and I'm going to read what they wrote uh, about what they found. And it's pretty funny. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just share this. It was very animated overreaction. So it says, please send pest control immediately, all caps. Possible B slash insect manifestation. Not an infestation, a manifestation. Out of the blue, I heard a buzzing sound and went into the living room to check. I saw a bee and was like, okay. <laughs> I turned towards the entryway and then there were more. OMG, the last thing I need is to get attacked by some bees. Please see pick. And she sent a pic of a bee laying <laughs> on the ground, just one bee, like laying on the ground in the middle of a room. They were huge. I attacked them with Lysol. I have no idea where they came from. The vents look too small, but maybe they could have gotten through. I had gone out earlier, but was in my house for a good two hours before I heard anything. I did not see any type of bee comb slash nest outside the door, nor did I see anything fly in when I came in. Right, so I went over and checked out this, this situation. There was in fact a bee laying on the ground. It had somehow gotten into her apartment and she sprayed it to death with Lysol. And <laughs> it was, it was just, it's just very funny to see people's reactions to seeing insects. You know, we live in Kentucky and there's a lot of bugs around here. And it's pretty funny when people freak out about a bee getting in their house, <laughs> the bee manifestation. My favorite part is where she said, I saw a bee and I was like, okay. <laughs> That's literally what it says, so bye. All right, so this video here, we have a carpenter bee. They are one of the largest, if not the largest bee species in this area. What this one is doing, it's drilling into the wood. They have chewing mouth parts that are very strong. They chew their way into the wood and make tunnels, left or right, up or down. And in these tunnels, they don't live there necessarily. They do spend a lot of time in there. They are building all of these little tunnels to make room for their larva. They can actually be up to two to three feet long, but they never get bigger than the actual carpenter bee size. So what I'm doing in this video is I'm gonna go ahead and treat these bee holes with dust. So this is an insecticide dust. It will last a very long time. It goes way back up in there, circulates in the air, and it will, unfortunately for the bees, but fortunately for me and the customer, kill these bees off and help them not destroy the wood that they're drilling into. This next video, this is one of the largest insect species in North America. This is the rhino beetle is the common term for it, but this is actually a female rhino beetle. The male rhino beetles have the rhino horn on it and that is why they're called that. But we just found this guy. Um, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. It's not really a true pest insect but it, it's big and burly, as you can see, and it basically does whatever it wants. Rhino beetles actually don't eat smaller insects, which you would think they would based on their size. They're actually herbivores. They just eat plants, 
vegetables, fruits, um, that's what they love. Yeah, you can flip this guy over. It's got a super strong exoskeleton. So all insects have an exoskeleton, and this guy actually has big old wings underneath its flaps on its back. So it lifts those flaps up and then it just flies off. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them, but hopefully I can get a cool video and picture of one flying away. That would be really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, that's a rhino beetle. Okay guys, and this next video is what you could call the highlight or low light of this highlight video. So this is an old video, but it goes to show what humans can do to create pest problems. So I got to this house, uh, this was actually last summer. I took a video of it. I didn't do much commentating, but yeah, just look at how disgusting it is. So you walk in and there is stuff everywhere. So the story goes that the landlord, the owner of this property calls us and say, hey, I've got some roaches in this unit. Okay, that happens all the time, great. We give him a little quote, we're like, all right, we'll go over there and we'll take care of the we'll take care of the roaches, you know? He doesn't mention anything like, oh, it's messy. He does tell us that the tenants just moved out, which is great information. It's very helpful for us to know that, that the tenants are out um, and it gives us less problems, usually less problems to worry about if there's no people in there. But you just walk in and boom, there there's just stuff, disgusting stuff, not just clothes, but food, empty bottles of this and that, just dirt, absolutely everywhere. It is disgusting. The smell of this place, you could not even walk in there without needing a respirator on to breathe. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of these roaches in there. We get to this job and I'm like, Jesus, like we can't even do a service hardly. You know, we can, we can spray some, but it's hardly gonna help. So we call the landlord and we're like, hey man, like, you gotta get all this stuff out of here before we can spray. And he's like, you know what? No, you guys need to go ahead and spray. We can't get the stuff out of there until you spray. One of those catch 22s, right? So it's like, all right, whatever. We'll do a spray, but we told him it's not gonna help a lot because there's so many bugs and there's so many places for them to hide. So what you're seeing, those are actually German cockroaches crawling everywhere. So yeah, we do the spray and a few weeks later, you know, we're, we're calling him for our follow-up spray. And he's like, hey guys, you guys have not done a good job. There are still cockroaches everywhere. And we're trying to tell him, well, you know, there's still stuff everywhere. So and long story short, for whatever reason, we were not able to articulate to this customer that the problems that he was having was not because of the bugs, it, the bugs were there because of the trash. The, the bugs don't just appear out of nowhere. There has to be trash and food sources and shelter for them to come in like this. So the moral of the story, in my opinion, is people are nasty. And this is just a prime example of how nasty people are. And yeah, I wish I had a follow up for this, but we haven't been back, but that one or two times and like I said, the customer was just not happy. We couldn't go back. He decided to call someone else. I, you know, I don't know what he did. He might as well just set the set the building on fire. But there were other units in the building that didn't look like this. So maybe he was able to get to take care of it. All right, here we have what I would consider very severe termite damage. So I've preached this and preached this on my pest control channel. You need to know what termites are if you own a home or a building that has wood as some of its structural foundation. So if you own a building that's completely built out of metal, you know, whatever, don't worry about termites. But for example, this building, this was an attached area that had been added to the house, right? They forgot to treat the soil for termites under this. So the termites decided to just crawl up and start feeding on the wood. When there is this much termite damage, the structural damage that is caused by these termites is almost irreversible. They're going to have to take out every single wall pillar of wood in this side of the house and completely replace it. You can see how the wood after the termites have really eaten it, it literally just crumbles like paper. They leave it in thin layers. They don't eat the winter wood. They do eat the summer wood because it's softer for them to eat. Please, please, please guys, just know what termites are and get it inspected once a year and it will keep you from spending thousands and thousands of dollars replacing the structure of your home. And it's also very dangerous to live in a home that has a bunch of termite damage. So guys, that's gonna wrap up this highlight video of my pest control week. I will be honest with you, this video was not actually last week. It was a, a kind of a conglomeration of a few previous weeks, but I'm gonna start doing this weekly at some point. So I hope you guys liked it. I am very happy about this idea. I think it's gonna be a great way for you guys to experience what it's like 
for myself in the field as a pest control technician, how the weeks change based on the seasons and what I'm doing out in the field and what my mindset is when I'm going to all these people's houses. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.